Welcome to the Aviva Experience, a podcast dedicated to surviving the emotional and psychological shit fuckery of midlife. Hi there, my name is Sarah Tuckett, and I'm a somatic psychotherapist based in Brisbane. Let's get on with the show. It has been brought to my attention that most men have no idea what's going on for women during menopause and perimenopause, and that they are blindsided by the menopausal rage that comes towards them. And what's worse, this is happening at a time when they are dealing with their own midlife crisis and the fact that they can't get the new Porsche in the garage at the same time as the Prado. So at the request of at least one male from my life, here is my irreverent, but also slightly serious guide to menopause anger for husbands. Plus five tips to help husbands survive menopause anger without non-surgical removal of your testicles, without anesthetic. So the first question a lot of men ask themselves is, is it my fault? Well, possibly. Definitely, if you were being a dick. But there is a chance that the anger coming towards you is the result of a huge hormonal change going on within the glorious body of your female. I know that it would be completely impossible for you to understand what is going on inside her body. But if you know what is going on, perhaps you can support her and then it can make your life a lot easier. And then hopefully your relationship will survive the fecal blizzard that is menopause. So I'm going to talk about the mental and emotional impacts of menopause and these five tips to help you avoid or survive menopausal anger. So what is menopause? Simply menopause is when a woman's ovaries stop producing eggs and she can no longer have periods each month. She is officially in menopause when a year has passed since her last period. So for most of us, this happens sometime uh, late 40s, early 50s, but it can occur earlier. And also some women have a medically induced menopause after surgery on the lady parts. In menopause, your lady's body stops producing estrogen, progesterone and testosterone leaving her in a hormonally depleted state. And perimenopause is the the years leading up to that state. And this can be up to about 10 years. Things are starting to wind down and the symptoms that I'm gonna talk about in a minute, they start to rear their heads. And as one GP explained to me, she said, you're like an old car. It was like, you've got a little bit of petrol left in the tank and you can, you're sort of sputtering along and you're getting there, but at a, At some point you're gonna run out of petrol and you're just gonna stop on the side of the road. So great, we're old cars. Now I'm not gonna talk about what these hormones are gonna do for our physical health, but what I am gonna talk about is what these hormones do for our mood and our mental health. Estrogen is a mood booster and it also calms the parts of your brain that are responsible for the fear and stress response. So this means that women with low estrogen will be less resistant to emotional and psychological stress. So those difficult work meetings or someone being just like a fuckwit on your commute to work. Estrogen also gives you clearer cognition, that means clearer thinking, and it improves your communication skills. So if your lady's having a really tough time at work and she can't explain what's going on or she can't talk to you, that's probably because she's in a low estrogen state. Progesterone is another one of the female hormones and progesterone makes us calmer. It gives us that, oh, you know what, it's okay, I've got this feeling. So now imagine that you've got none of that and that's what your lady is dealing with. And then the third hormone that we really talk about with women, although there are lots and lots and lots, it's testosterone. Yes, we have it too. And testosterone makes us feel sexier, makes us feel motivated, more creative, more able to get shit done. So again, think about all those hormones having disappeared. 
in menopause, your lady Noni has extremely low levels of hormones in her body. And these hormones have been swimming around her body since puberty, keeping her healthy and happy. And now they've left the building. She's actually in reverse puberty. Now remember how shit puberty was for you? Now double that, because not only has she got to cope with this hormonal hijack, but she also now has adult responsibilities, possibly children, work, aging parents, and your relationship to cope with. Now there are some upsides in menopause, which I'll start with first. So first of all, no more periods. Hooray, she no longer has to surf the Crimson Tide each month. And she no longer has to pay GST on expensive feminine hygiene products. Fuck you very much, Australian government. She may also start speaking her mind and standing up for herself. Estrogen and progesterone make us kinder, nicer, more caring. Now they've actually exited stage left, so your good lady wife might start speaking her mind a bit more on pesky topics such as the gender pay gap, invisible division of labour, and those skid marks in your pants in the laundry basket. It's also a time of transformation for ladies. Midlife and menopause can be a time when she starts to think about how she wants to live her life going forwards, her second adulthood as it were. What does she want to do? How does she want to feel? What does she want to leave behind as her legacy? So this can actually be a time of really positive change for her, but she needs your support and acceptance as she goes through this transformation. Now let me tell you about the downsides of menopause. This is the clusterfuck of symptoms that your wife, your female, your partner, whoever it is, may be experiencing. Now strap in, because this is a big list. Bouts of sudden rage, irritability, feeling teary and emotional for fuck knows why, low resistance to stress, loss of libido, perhaps she's changing from rampant sex goddess to put my nighty down when you're finished. Vaginal dryness and pain during sex. Do not fucking think of bringing that thing near me unless it is well lubricated. Recurrent UTIs due to vaginal dryness and the basically a design flaw in the female urinary gener- genital urinary system. Brain fog, which is like a complete inability to think or focus or even say your name out loud. Feeling completely exhausted all the bloody time. Weight gain around the middle, which is the dangerous fat type, the one you really don't want. Joint pain, muscle pain, yay, more pain. Hot flushes, which is like suddenly sweating like a water buffalo, just in the middle of nowhere for no reason. Night sweats, completely shit sleep. And some women suddenly get mental health issues when they've never experienced them before. Anxiety and depression are common symptoms of peri and post-menopause. And it is no coincidence that this midlife period, 45 to 55, is the most common age for female suicide. For some women, it's a worsening of existing mental health conditions. And some find out that they have conditions like ADHD that they'd never known before. Those are the charming symptoms like hair loss, osteoporosis, heart palpitations, dizziness, oh, and less resilience to autoimmune diseases because we have less resistance to stress. Awesome, so many fun symptoms and surprises, really good times. But there is hope. HRT is fabulous, and I have seen women's mental and physical symptoms evaporate after taking HRT. And despite what you might have heard on the interwebs, HRT is safe and effective for most women. Not every GP has had specialist training in menopause, so help your lady find a great GP that is specially trained in menopause, and I'll put a link below to the Australian Menopause Society. Lifestyle tweaks can really improve symptoms. The problem is that we ladies think that we, we, you know, we're still living in the same body that we were in our 20s and 30s, but we are not, and we cannot get away with the stuff we used to get 
away with before. You know, big weekends, boozy nights out, eating curry at midnight, that kind of thing. But small changes to your lady's lifestyle can positively impact her symptoms. Getting really good sleep is the most important. Let her sleep. She needs more than you. What she eats, when she eats, her working schedule, how much rest she gets, the type of movement she gets, all of this can positively impact her menopausal symptoms. I'm going to put a list, a link below to a program that I did myself called My Menopause Transformation by Dr. Wendy Sweet. I am not remotely affiliated with it, but I did it myself and it really helped me. So it might help your lady. Encourage her to talk to someone. Menopause is a time of huge transition. Letting go of a youthful body and the ability to have babies. It can bring up a lot of grief for many women. It also may be a time of feeling stuck and confusion because what's my identity? What's my purpose? Now I'm no longer of breeding age. But menopause, as I've said, can also be a time of stepping forwards into this second adulthood, a new and powerful stage in your life. So encourage your lady to talk to someone. Many counselors like me are recognizing how much support women need as we go through this stage and how helpful it can be to just talk to someone about it. You do not have to go through it alone. So, Gentlemen, here is my list of five things that you can do to help your lady. Number one, listen to her. I know it's so tempting to offer solutions, but please just listen to her. You don't need to fix anything. But if you listen to her and ask her questions, she will feel heard, validated and supported and loved. And therefore less likely to want to bite your head off, which is always a bonus. Number two, ask her, what can you do to help her? So I know that some of you are awesome and you're doing what you can to help around the house, but it is still likely that she is doing the lion's share of work around the house. And she is exhausted, believe me. And she is less resilient to stress. So the more that you can do without her having to ask you to do it, the better. Number three, give her a hug to raise her oxytocin levels. So when I'm talking about hugging here, I'm assuming that A, this lady likes hugs, B, she's not your boss or something like this, she is it's actually your intimate partner we're talking about or someone else in your family. So hugging releases the love hormone oxytocin, which have make her feel closer to you and like she trusts you more as well. Number four, Install air conditioning in the bedroom. Help her get a really good night's sleep. Help her regulate her temperature better. And don't whinge if you're feeling too cold. Just grab a blanket for your side of the bed. Help her get a really good night's sleep and half of these symptoms are gonna evaporate. And the final one, share this information with your buddies. The more men that understand what 51% of the population go through in midlife, the better. We are already struggling with our symptoms, with work, with all of our duties. So the more you can do to help us and understand us, the better. Now one final thought. For historical and cultural reasons, our world is shaped by men. Our working life is structured around a seven day cycle that suits the male physiology. You guys get a blast of testosterone every one to three hours. So that's a boost of energy and motivation. Can you imagine what it would feel like to live in a body which is completely depleted of hormones? No energy, no motivation, just really struggling to get through life. So how could you perhaps restructure your home life or your work in life to help this person that you live with, that you love. Maybe then that saying, happy wife, happy life, might actually ring a bit truer in midlife. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. I have a question for you. How do you want to feel today? Powerful, 
playful, or present. Download my free guide, Feel Your Vava Voom in 60 Seconds, and find out how.